Huzzah everybody, welcome to a new type of video on my channel. It's called An Interview With, and I was lucky enough to get the sexy man himself, Tonic, uh, on my channel. We sat down for a lovely Discord chat, and he answered some of my questions. It's something that I want to do with the rest of the Fallout community, 76ers and Twitch streamers alike, uh, so if you do want to be on, let me know. But enjoy the interview with Tonic, and thank you very much, Tonic, for being on it. I hope I get to do many more of these in the future. Enjoy, everybody. Huzzah, everybody. Welcome to the first of a test video, which is an interview with. Now, with me today, I have the one, the only, Mr. Now, is it Tonic or Tunic or Teonic? I don't know. <laughs> it's Tonic. It's Tonic. It's just Tonic with a, with a zero. Yes. Yeah, with right. a zero. So the if, zero is because I'm a gamer. Ah, see? Now it all makes sense. If you guys didn't know who uh, Tonic is, he is another 76er. He does everything Fallout, whereas I'm a builder and random uploader of stupid stuff uh tonic makes a lot of good stuff and funnily enough does it in a rush so bravo to tonic right there i have him with me for a series of questions because it's time to go and interview the entirety of the fallout 76ers and uh, tonic was happy enough to be the first person to it so welcome tonic howdy <laughs> so <laughs> i guess the big question would be why fallout 76 oh man Mm -hmm. Wastelanders. Wastelanders. That's the answer. So, Fallout 76. I got it the day it came out. I pre-ordered it. Same. And it was all right. I played a little bit. I did some of the main quests. And then I, I've i always played Fallout games. I'm a huge Fallout game person. So I instantly, not instantly, but after a week, I was back playing like a modded Fallout 4 playthrough. And after a little, after like the first year, I think, is until Wastelanders came out. I hardly played it, and once Wastelanders hit, or at least the week before Wastelanders, because I was getting back into it, and it hit, and my the love for the game just like went through the roof. So then I just started sinking hours into it like crazy, and then one day I went on and I wanted to get something on the Atomic Shop, and I was like, "All right, this looks kind of cool. it was the Red Rocket Power Armor," and no one I wanted to see it in game before I bought it, and there was no video on it, no pictures on Reddit or nothing, and I was like, "All right." So I bought it, and then I uploaded the pictures on Reddit, and I made a quick little video. It was like two minutes long. I didn't even talk in it or anything. And I actually got a decent amount of views, and some people were commenting saying, thanks for showing this, and that's kind of where it all started. That does tend to be where stuff like that starts. I know there's there's a bunch of different 76ers who were like, either the data mining or anything like that, and we just send them out, and people are like, dude, more. And it's like, all right, yeah, it's just, supply it's and demand. It's really natural. Like, it just happened. I don't know. So it's that's weird. that. That's what basically, funnily enough, links in with my next question, which is uh, what got you into doing both Fallout and YouTube at the same time? I guess you basically just answered that, which is really yeah, cool. And you sly devil. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to, I guess, pinpoint recently why people do like Fallout. It's kind of... Um, it started off bad. Everybody, uh, I think everybody can agree Fallout started off bad. Then it got good. And now it's kind of going downhill again, which asks me, it leads me to my next question. Do you think that? No, I don't. I actually think the opposite. I, I just recently did a video on the player counts of the game. And right now it seems like we're at the highest peak we've ever been at. And on top of that, you've probably seen the recent news of cyberpunk oh yeah and a lot of people were comparing cyberpunk to no man's sky which is really cool because no man's sky has made a huge comeback and it's reveled as a really cool like it's a majestic being in its, it's own sense it's also a really cool game to play yeah and so another cool thing was at the same time that they were comparing it to that they were also comparing it to fallout 76 and they were saying that these two games could make an awesome comeback after a horrible launch so it's pretty much like widely accepted now that 76 made a comeback and is playable. It's in a playable good state. And it, like, yeah, after Steel Dawn, some of the people are leaving just because of lack of content. But as the game as a whole, I think it's at probably one of the best points it's ever been at, if not the best point. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm the, probably one of the first people who will and have called Bethesda out on some of the stuff that they've done. Oh, um, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> like I told you, I'm like three seconds away from sending in 
uh, an email to apply for a, a job there as a as a season scoreboard thinker upper. Uh, but I'll, I'll have to. I'm I'm happy with that. I've never ever ever been disappointed with the game until recently, and that's only with things like daily ops. That's that's the only thing recently that's yeah. kind of this kind Those of, kind mm, of weird. irked me a little bit. But I mean, you cover everything Fallout on. On your channel, from like atom shot updates to doing your fun little um, script, a thousand script at the purveyor. Those are a lot of fun to watch. Oh, thank you. I like those ones a lot. So, as someone who has covered, and you were one of the first people I know that covered also uh, the season three before it actually came out. What are your thoughts on season three's uh, scoreboard and some of the updates that they've actually brought into the game itself? Um. Season three is all right. It has a lot more consumables rather than, or it doesn't have more, but it has a lot more than the past seasons. And I don't like that. I, I like it in one sense. Like I like the lunch boxes. Those are kind of cool, but like the bubble gum, like we were talking earlier. Oh is, yeah. It's just weird. I don't understand. Like you were saying to comment on recent updates recently, they just took out the food and hunger system or the hunger and thirst system so we don't need to eat or drink anymore and then they add in bubble gum that refills your <laughs> food and drink meter i don't understand the thinking i it may have been an oversight i don't know but it it's all right like i don't hate it i don't love it some of the stuff i really like the vendor is really sick the backpack flares a lot of people think they're gimmicky but i actually really like them i i think they're kind of cool it's it's all right it's pretty 50 50 for me well, I mean, in a game like this, we kind of need little gimmicky things, don't we? Like the backpack yeah. flares and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. It's just, it just gets me hyped. I don't know why. The backpack flares, when I saw them, I was like, I want that. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's weird. So did I. Just I mean, that little thing makes me so happy. Th there's two of them in the season three score at the yeah. minute. There's the Red Rock like ones the and Red the Rock Armor Race. Though. The Armor Race one, I kind of like. It's, it is kind of a letdown, season three. Um, for me personally, and for quite a lot of people. Now, it feels like Bethesda have kicked England in the teeth because, <laughs> well, I mean, they chose two major things yeah. that are part of, you know, English culture, time travel, Doctor Who, and Avalon, Arthurian legend, and they went nowhere with it. So, it's, me personally, I think season three, they have kind of missed a beat because uh, on, uh on my review of it, you know, there's only 17 things for the player. The rest of it is kind of things like the bubble gums or the lunchbox or anything like that. Um, I just feel like it lost the theme that it used to have. Like, season one, base. Base items, base camp items. It was sick. Season two, military stuff. We had military yep. items, military wallpapers. Like, it was really cool. Season three is just kind of everywhere. Like, you got stuff, leftover stuff from the armor race, it feels like. You got, like, some weird inkwell stuff you got it's consumables like it's just all it doesn't seem to have the theme of the picture behind the scoreboards yes and it just seems kind of everywhere i like I've, I've talked to people in passing while playing the game i've talked to people who are 76ers and all this kind of stuff and uh, a lot of the people who are british are like yeah why didn't they just give us uh excalibur as, a, as like a sword skin for the chinese officer's sword because oh that'd be sick the, well uh, on the scoreboard alistair the white knight is holding an excalibur i mean why not give it why put it on the scoreboard and not give it us we're well, getting inkwell it, and a backpack why not we give might us... get it next season it's quite possible because <laughs> um, we got the armory yeah back, backpack flare and stuff so maybe we'll get it next season but i mean they also missed a beat with the fact that merlin is a zayton He's a Zayton alien, so I mean, come on! There's so much fun that you could have right there, and they've just kind of—it's even kinda, like if yeah. they did like a little thing where the Flatwoods monster was dressed up like Merlin for like a see. The, that'd, that'd be, be kind of cool. That'd be funny, but we're dealing that'd with be... we're dealing with time travel, and it's not something that was implemented into the game. It's like, yeah, Inkwell she travels through time. Oh, oh, oh! Thank you. Okay, see, uh, they had the perfect opportunity. Like, there's that one monorail cart i don't know if you know it, <laughs> that, little that travels cart. through time yep yeah it travels through time can you still hear me by the way yeah i can still hear you all right my i wasn't touching my computer so i went into sleep mode but <laughs> so there's that monorail thing and like yeah it's supposed to be like time travel is the lore behind it like i was trying to think of that that would have been cool if they took that and made just a small even just like a few go fetch something and come back quests it would have been cool just a small little yeah. quest line small yeah and that would have been a really good way 
of implementing things like um, yes. a pure white power uh, well not even power arm a pure white like armor paint job to give you the same yeah. thing as yeah it, it, it that's would kind be of like what I way. felt like was lacking in Steel Dawn like Steel Dawn was cool but they just didn't have anything else to do besides the main quest it had no side quests and I feel like that was it's the same with the scoreboard there's just the one thing and they don't elaborate on it like Steel Dawn yes. you flew through it and Three, four hours. May it took me an hour. And that's even with trying to take your time and doing stuff. You know? So, like, it would have been cool if they had side quests. Like, go try and recruit some more members for the Brotherhood. Their armories that a week. Go bring them laser rifles and they'll give you caps. Like, something cool like that. Mm, it, it I just, mean... It's just... They didn't have anything really it, for it. The, as it. It was more of a teaser. Steel Dawn was more of a teaser than it was an actual update, which is a shame. But, didn't I mean, we get, I like, like, two it. or two to two out of three parts? Or something like that? No, I think we got... It, it, what, are you talking about with the future... Uh, yeah, because uh, we got Steel Dawn coming. and, f and the Steel. other one. Fractured Steel is the, ones, the bigger one coming up, I do believe. Because they said yeah. that they combined the two in the one that they gave us, and then they're giving us an extra one. Mm, I don't, so I'd, I think we got two out of three parts I, I, already. Yeah, I think they might be trying to pull the wool over our eyes on that one, because it, it doesn't feel like that. I don't know, it feels, it's just weird. It's like a mystery. Well, moving on from that, because we did kind of mention the Atom Shop a little bit. You have done Atom Shop bundle reviews, and you've also, you know, gandered at the Atom Shop, as it were. Uh, I've kind of been doing the same on a on a personal level. Uh, I've been ju okay. I've been judging Bethesda <laughs> from the shadows, as it were. Uh, but I want to know the Atom Shop since it's come out and up to now. What do you think of it? And uh, the changes oh, that have uh, have come through with things like uh, the bundles, and if you already have a part of a bundle that's out, you now get a discount and all that kind of stuff. The fact so that how much are... time do we got in this video? Oh God! Well, let's let's not go too <laughs> long on it because we did I'll, we I'll, stick I'll with quick. season three quite a bit. All right, so Atomic Shop. It at first it was just brutal. It was kind of a scam at first. It was not worth. Like, do you remember the whole lightwood laminate oh, thing? Oh God! <laughs> like, it it was it was a pretty brutal thing. It kind of just a spit in the face of a lot of Fallout players. However, I feel like recently they've made major improvements on the Atomic Shop items in general. Just if you look at the bundles when the game first came out before Wastelanders to where the bundles we get now are, totally different. It's one hundred percent different, a hundred percent better quality, and it's just it's. It's improved a lot, and I'm really hoping, because with the improved bundles, they are making a lot more money on them, because I see people all the time with the latest Atomic Shop stuff in-game. You see a lot of just completely decked out camps where they have all the newest stuff. So I'm hoping that they take some of that money that they make and put it into farther development of the game. And that's just kind of my major thing with it, is the bundles are getting better, so maybe that is a sign that they are putting some more money into development, but... We're not really seeing it in the face of content, you know. Well, I mean, it, we could we could potentially link that with uh, season two, you know, like the remnants of season two on the scoreboard. Yeah. Maybe instead of putting them on the scoreboard, they should make them as a like a atom shop bundle. Like this is the things that we missed. Here, have them. That'd be cool. <laughs> it'd be a more it'd be a better way to to get around. You know, oh, we haven't got some ideas. What should we do? Uh, how about we give them some of the stuff that we didn't give them last time? No, we'll do that yeah, as like a bundle. Yeah, like season two recap bundle or something Yeah, like and then we'll pull our finger out and we'll actually make some good stuff here. I just feel like the Atomic Shop has just improved so much and like it's even to the point now where it's widely accepted in the community, which is really cool to see. If you remember back in the day, like they release a bundle and instantly on the Fallout Reddit, everyone's like, this is trash. Why, yes. Why would they release this? And now you see every single Tuesday... Everyone's talking about the new bundle. There's a post up the same minute of the stuff, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's so cool!" It's when yeah, I, the attitude I, towards it has changed a hundred percent, and it's really cool to see. And it's they have learned. definitely, yeah, they've definitely improved so much on it to the point where the like the community is accepting it, which is awesome. I kind of just reiterated the same point there twice, but that, yeah, but I mean, you've just you, <laughs> what you've just done is you've managed to pull a Bethesda, which is do the same thing twice and hope it sticks the second time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's 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 just really crazy to me because I've I've been playing for a while in like since I said at the beginning of the game, and it's just it's really overlooked in my opinion that the improvements on the Atomic Shop. Yeah, I, I will I will agree. Like at the beginning, 
not a big fan of the Atomic Shop. Uh, as it's gone on, the stuff that's been in the Atomic Shop, I've been like, that's cool, but I still think pricing is an issue when it comes to some of the some of the stuff. Like you know, they'll try and give they'll try and put a, a ceiling fan on 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 sale from 1,500 atoms to 900 atoms. And that's not a sale, is it? For a ceiling fan no, and maybe like a stool. The, the pricing recently has been pretty insane. Because mm. like, you know, I do it every single week. So every single week I get the newest bundle and I showcase it. And I've 100% noticed that it's recently been going up slightly. It's slightly been going up. And to the point where people started to notice was when that Brotherhood bundle dropped. Oh, if you remember that. Oh, we ripped into that. Yeah, was kinda, we ripped into them. Yeah, but even before that, the prices from the bundles are going up from fifteen, fifteen dollars to twelve dollars to, you know, thirteen. It was around there generally was pretty accepted, and then some of them started jumping up around seventeen dollars, and then like two weeks later, we got the Brotherhood bundle at thirty. Yeah, and then the Catwalk bundle at what eighteen dollars? Something, something, like, something, it was something like that. crazy. It's, I don't know if the Catwalk was eighteen, but the Atrium was. Yeah, so so like, I think Bethesda really needs to sit down and like put a mirror in front of them and talk to them. So like, do we, would I really pay eighteen dollars for this? And and really, well, I would I'd think because a lot of the people aren't liking it. The tough part is like, a lot of people are buying it though, so they're gonna keep doing it. And like, I am guilty of that because that's my <laughs> thing is I do Atomic Shop reviews. Oh yeah, but. I tend to, at the end of the videos, I always kind of give my thoughts. And a lot of the time I'll say if something's overpriced or not. But the re I think it's a deeper reason than people are just buying it and they're going to keep doing it. I think that people are just that oh. scraped for content. <laughs> I really thought you were going to say stupid then. No, I just feel like people, like we're just that starved of new content to the point where like paying 18 bucks for an atrium is 100% worth it just to give us something to decorate, you know? yeah i mean like it's when something new comes into the game it, everyone wants it because it's new content I, I, that we i definitely not very i definitely feel that because as as a fallout builder you can only really build so much in so many oh, ways yeah. before it starts like oh why am i doing this and then when they dropped when they dropped the shelters i was like that's really cool give it me now so i can do this and the Atom Shop never really managed to do any with some of the bundles. Like the only one I really liked was the Flying Fortress, because that, that was really, really cool. cool. Yeah. That reminded me like a Fallout play home, and I was like, "That's really cool. Let's do that." But it's I've never really. It's really hard to like explain, but with all the bundles since the beginning, well, with anything from the Atom Shop since the beginning, I've never really been kind of like, "I need that now. That's really cool. Give me." It's always the just kind of like one. Mm. The only one that I was like, "I need this right now." was the Contemporary House bundle. So as I, I guess as as we can call you an Atom Shop, uh, I was going to say a concierge then, but no, I meant to say the word <laughs> connoisseur. There we go. Uh, as, as an Atom Shop connoisseur, do you think you could... I don't want to say improve it, but I, I, do you think you have any um, tips or any things that you'd actually like to see the Atom Shop change-wise uh, that could make it better, would make it better, should make it better? What do you think? Have you got any... Because I know you love the Atom Shop, and you did personally ask to to have some Atom Shop questions fired your way. So I think the so, big one, the big one, it, what do you think you could offer or Bethesda should do to improve the Atom Shop? So I got a ton of thoughts racing around right now, and I'll Go try and put them into words efficiently. So number one, power armor bundles, way too expensive. Agreed. They they price power armor the same as like a camp bundle at a fraction of the content, and it's it's a shame because I I don't even wear power armor, but if I did, I would just be so sad that all the cool power armor costs like thirteen bucks. I think the power armor pricing is pretty brutal. I'd like more camp items, and with that, I'd like to elaborate. I'd really like more Adam Shop specific bundle items. Like some of the bundles have things where you can only get them in the bundle. And some of the bundles don't. Actually, a lot of them don't. I think uh, the Boo Sound sound machine, that was a, a specific one to the bundle. So when you bought the bundle, it's the only way you could get it. Yes. And I thought that was kind of cool. It was like a, a little reward for buying the bundle is that you would get something that's very specific. It's kind of just to like flex on other people. But it was cool because you could have something that not anyone else had. You can't just go buy that in the Atomic Shop at a later date for sale. 
Because that's something like buying stuff at a later date is something that I actually got really upset about with the Tri-Continental bundle. I did not like when they put that in the atomic the, shop. That was what, horrible. What was the Tri-Continental bundle? That was the one or Tri-Centennial. I, tri, I don't oh, know how oh. to Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. I was like, Tri-Continental. I was like, what? They did, they did something for three different continents. I was kind of confused no. for a second. The, the, the Tri-Centennial bundle. Yeah. I get yeah, what you mean. Yeah, Tri-Centennial. I just pronounced it horribly. <laughs> you, really, <laughs> you really threw me through a loop then. I was like, have I missed a bundle? No, that one, I just hate that they put that in the Atomic Shop. That was a pre-order, yes. or at least it was advertised as, if you pre-order the game, you get these items, and it's really cool. And then they keep selling it, which was already an issue, if you remember. Everyone was like, why are you guys still selling this on the Microsoft Store and the PS4 Store and all that? And then later on, they're like, we're removing it. We're removing the bundle. I don't know if, we, I don't know if you remember that, but on the main page, they're saying the Tri-Continental Bundle's leaving. And it won't be coming back from the PlayStation Store and the Microsoft Store and Steam. And then two weeks later, it's in the Atomic Shop. So they didn't really lie. They just moved it from the Microsoft Store to the Atomic Shop yes. and sold it for 20 bucks. It's, it's, it is, yeah. Th there's I nothing to show that I pre-ordered the game. I really and think. And I paid for that. I really think Bethesda, because Bethesda do like to say, we talk to the community, which probably means they talked about three people and then make something up. Um apart from sometimes when they actually do talk to the community, I think what they need to do is they need to have, and I'm just putting this out there, Bethesda, so if you're listening, you know, get in contact, but I really think they need some people to who play the game and sit around and do all this kind of stuff that don't have the constraints of, I have to do this part of the game, or I have to patch this, or I have to, you know, come up with new stuff for this. They really do need, like, Atom Shop thinker upperers, season scoreboard thinker upperers, all this kind of stuff that come from the community. That you know, it could be a, a yeah. mix of like PvP uh, players, builders, all this other kind of stuff. Put them together, like, hire a group of five and just have them submit things that should be in you know, uh, the Atom Shop this week. And then it saves up, you know, Bethesda having to sit down with some of its graphic artists and all this kind of stuff and go, What should we put in the uh, you know, we'll come up with something? What should we do? And then they spend like two days on it. Whereas we as the community and the players and the people are always like, we need this, we need this, we would like this. We, it, it would be cool if this was in it. Get rid of this. You know, we don't need that. You cluttering up. We need a, a nice well, little tidy out. You were asking, like, what are some ideas? And I could tell you the best selling idea that would ever be in the Atomic Shop right now, and that'd be Go double sided it. wallpapers. Oh my God. Yes. If that was, I don't understand why that wouldn't be in the Atomic Shop. A double sided wall or a double sided wallpaper. Yeah. I, that should be in the atomic shop and then if you want to elaborate on things the community wants in the atomic shop give us to the ability to purchase pets even though they're dumb and they're gimmicky I'm, i still want a pet pretty sure they talked about that at some point didn't they, they did they talked about it like a few months ago and then nothing happened like remember the data miners found like dog houses and all that oh, kind yeah. of, they found dog collars and then nothing came of it and yeah people are too busy having to like go out with perks and uh recruit animals that way and be yeah. like you know and then someone and then nicks they, their camp and they all die like in in uh elder scrolls online you can have pets that follow you around and i don't think they really do anything i'm pretty sure they just follow you around it'd be well it'd i mean cool. we've we've technically we've got the mechanics for a dog already yeah if you were to take this like the uh collectron and give it and change the collectron actual like station to a dog house and reskin it to be a dog and the dog can bring back like meat or something like that something stupid oh there you go done yeah Look, so two blokes on a on a interview have just come up with something better than bethesda have probably sat down <laughs> and thought about well i'm telling you if you put in a golden shepherd or what is that dog that uh the internet loves a shibu, Toss oh, in a shibu. Yeah, yeah are you kidding me that would pay for an entire <laughs> year's salary of their workers yes everyone <laughs> you wouldn't see a camp without it no, you could like customize the if you they made a oh, little God, way, you could yeah. customize the dog tag and stuff. Oh my God! Name your dog, give it a collar, all like yeah, no, that'd be great. And then they could come up with different awesome. reskins for it as well, which that dumb. That well, look, yeah. why why are two blokes sat in an interview talking about a game coming up with better, more stuff than probably like a team of fifty come up with at Bethesda? It's it's because we play the know. game and we're part of the community and we don't have the constraints of, you know, Bethesda's workload sitting on top of us. So I understand that people at Bethesda are hardworking people and they do try and bring us the best game possible. Please don't kill me with nukes. <laughs> so I really I, hope go that on. this Microsoft acquisition helps them a lot. Oh, God, I, that'd I be great. saw that they, the studio working at 76 a while ago, they commented some on some interview saying that they were not happy with the funding that they were getting. Which it, you can see it. Yes. You can definitely see it. 
So, and if you look at like the funding for 76 versus Elder Scrolls Online, Elder Scrolls Online gets a crazy game changing DLC like four times a year. And we've had none. We've had, I, I'd, I'd say Wastelanders was our oh, yeah, game changing DLC. Yeah. That's about it's, it. You know, it's like the other stu- other parts of the studio have so much funding. And 76 is kind of left in the dark. At least it was. And I'm hoping that it starts coming back. Yeah, maybe that's what they're doing with like uh, some of the recent bundles in Season 3. Get out all the old stuff, and then Season 4, which is funnily enough our next topic in a second, uh, will have <laughs> all the like really fun funded stuff behind it, and people won't be like, why are you charging me $30 for six items, and only three of them are usable as a, on my person and stuff like that, with you know the like, BOS bundle? As, as expensive as that Brotherhood bundle was, it was awesome. Yeah, I will say I mean, that. the items were phenomenal. I'm just waiting until the backpack turns up in the item shop, which it most likely will. <laughs> oh yeah, it probably will. So it's phenomenal, though. Final question, probably to round out season four. Hopes and dreams. What do you think? What What do you want to see in season four. four? What do you not want to see in season four? Um, item shop wise, because there's normally every time a season launches, there's normally something in the item shop that goes with it. There's always you know something that also goes into the game, like maybe. They changed some stuff around. So on season four, give me something you'd like to see in the item shop, something you'd like to see in game as like a different mechanic or maybe a fix to a mechanic or something like that, and uh, also give me what you would like to see the scoreboard as. Three points. All right. Let's see what you got. <laughs> okay. So something I'd like to see in the atomic shop. One hundred percent double sided wallpapers. Two hundred percent double sided wallpapers. <laughs> I really want double sided wallpapers. I- it just it needs to be there. It should be. They shouldn't have to spend half the camp or two walls worth of budget to make a double sided wall. It's ridiculous. And then to talk about what I hope season four would be like, or I guess a new mechanic. A new mechanic. I really hope that they would add the tradeability to the new weapons. I think that that's just ridiculous that we can't trade the Crusader pistol and the War hmm. Glaive. I don't like that. I I, I really like the whole trading. Like one of the biggest parts, or one of the biggest sub communities of fallout 76 other than camp builders and the crazy build character build people is the trading community like the market 76 subreddit it's popping all the time there's so many people on it they're trading like crazy bloody fixers and it, they've been trading the same things for years they, it's always just looking for a bloody fixer or yeah a market 76 handmade is crazy i've been on there a few times just looking yeah, just looking it's at really stuff populated and it's it's off the charts man it is and like so everyone on there has been trading the same stuff and then they finally release a new weapon and you can't trade it. Yeah. It's it's just weird. I don't understand I don't understand it. I feel like the trading community would be pretty stoked to have some new weapons to trade. I'm pretty and then sure also everyone. if I could throw another thing in there, I really like to see some new new mutations. I think mutations are really cool. And we haven't really had them in any other Fallout games. And I really like them. Like I hope that they're in Fallout 5 whenever that comes out. <laughs> if mutations if. are cool. <laughs> it will. It I'm, probably will. Yeah, I'm sure it will. There's no way it doesn't. But Microsoft taking over and all that Fallout's huge. I really hope it does. Yeah, there's no way they can shelf it. If they, yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> if not. They do, let's, I'll be so upset. Let's not dwindle on that. So you, you've given me your atom shop thing. Uh, what do you think? Bun, uh, the scoreboard. Let's go with the scoreboard, and then we'll round it off with the game mechanics or anything that needs fixing in the actual game itself. So what do you want to see for the scoreboard? Give me a theme that you'd like to see. Give me some of the stuff on the scoreboard itself you'd like to see, and let's see what you can come up with. A theme? Yeah. Honestly, I think a really cool theme. Because when's the new scoreboard drop? Uh, drop? Next year, I think. It would still be in the winter, so I'd like a winter theme scoreboard. Maybe like uh, with like skiers on it, with like futuristic retro skis and it was kind of cool like uh what do they have it what's that one we have a snow resort in the game i can't remember the name of it uh well the super top, mutants are there yeah the top well the top of the world is a ski resort isn't it but it's yeah <laughs> top of the world <laughs> oh is it top of the world all oh, right okay no there's another smaller one yeah I forgot da- top of the world down at the bottom of the hill one. yeah so that, i think that'd be kind of cool like a wintery themed one and we had a ton of really cool like winter items i just wish we had more winter stuff in the game to the point of it, I think it'd be cool to have like a ski, a ski weapon that we could toss onto a, maybe a shish kebab or something like that. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, like a I ski mean, pole. Th- there's only re- well, there's there's the one ski weapon, which is yeah. the actual ski itself. So that's I think kind the of... ski pole would be kind of a cool weapon. 
and just some cool like winter outfits like the clean winter jacket or whatever that one is is pretty hot in the trading market yeah i know it's a rare item and i think like some of those really cool winter items would be pretty sweet like a nice beanie some nice maybe even like a nice snow backpack yeah like a a yeti plushie as a backpack maybe like they did with the uh Oh, that'd the be cool on the, on the school where like a big Yeti in the background, like chasing a skier down a hill. See, that'd they have be like fusion cool. powered skis. Well, I mean, we won't be getting season four until March, so I don't think we could really do winter stuff there then. Oh, it's that long? Yeah, March four. Yeah, uh, March long. is season four update. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for a, a winter thing. Well, I'm just a huge winter guy. I really like the winter. I, items. Man, I like the rain. I'd love to see an umbrella as a weapon that you can actually use. Or an umbrella remote like Mary Poppins. That'd be pretty cool. An umbrella jetpack. Oh my god, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be pretty sick. Oh god, now it's turning into Fortnite. Ah, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> I think that has been a really, really, really good conclusion to uh, the first ever weird interview that's man i hope i can do more of these because it's actually been a buttload of fun and you've brought up some good <laughs> points you've made some good points you've brought up some good ideas we've we've attempted to fix some things and i've applied for a job at bethesda as a scoreboard thinker upper <laughs> uh, <laughs> there we go so before we before we pop off is there anything that you would like to say it just anything random i mean you could say down with you know whatever or you could say something really thoughtful and uh uh, and actually yeah that'd be people's cool. mind have you got anything that you want to say yeah so yesterday i don't know when this video is going live but yesterday i just hit five thousand subscribers and i just i do want to give a huge thank you to all you guys it's literally insane like it's been my dream since i was a little, a little kid i was like 10 years old watching minecraft videos on youtube and i thought that was the coolest thing ever and to now actually be somewhat living that dream is amazing it is the coolest honor i could ever have and i do want to say thank you to all you guys and it's from the bottom of my heart i actually really do mean it that is the proper way to end an interview by saying thank you to everybody and from me to you i will say thank you for actually making stuff like i watch i know nothing about like you know builds or i don't really pay attention to the item shop or anything like that so binge watching your videos like i did you know over the past weekend has been really fun and it, it <laughs> thank you as someone who only focuses on one aspect of the the game itself and doesn't really focus on some of the other stuff, like I don't, I've never, I've never launched a nuke to take out the queen. I've never done all that kind of stuff. Never fought Earl. Never done any of that. Really? Um, I'm I'm not spec'd out for it. My build, uh, I don't have a build. I am like one of five people I think in the entirety of Fallout hey, I, who doesn't I have a build. It. Um, like I maybe said, the, when hey, I did my bloodied build, maybe I, that's a build. Yeah, when I sat on that, was I highly recommend or at least i didn't say i highly recommend but i love the quality of life perk cards more than damage perk cards i really like just being able to play the game the way that you actually want without worrying about if you put out the most damage or what you can do it's all about playing and having fun that's that's kind of how i play like a lot of people call me a food build because i have through hiker on but i just like to carry hey, a lot so of water I. with me it's yeah it's it's just how i like to play the game so i wouldn't worry too much about it well, as someone who doesn't have a build and someone who does builds and does other fun stuff as well, thank you for joining me today on an interview with, um, funnily enough, that's the name, but that's going to be the name of the thing going from now on. I've just come up with it, an interview with. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but thanks for joining me, <laughs> Tonic. Uh, it's been fun having you on. It's been fun listening to what you've got to say. And it's, uh, thank you very much for ans <laughs> answering my questions. I almost said asking my questions then. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thanks, uh, everybody who's watched. Um, if as well uh if tonic you want to put this up on your channel as well feel free to do it uh i'll send you all the stuff after it's fully done and everything by that but if you're on my channel thank you very much for joining me you know the drill like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one and if you're on tonic's build tonic how'd you end out uh sorry if you're on tonic's channel sorry tonic how'd you end a video i'll end it by saying thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it and usually i shout out all my channel members but i don't have that list in front of me right now <laughs> but I also do want to say that I am working on a huge project, and since I did hit 5,000 subs, I do want to give back to the community. So I am working on a huge project. I can't really get too much into it right now, but it's going to be pretty cool, and it's my way of giving back to the community. So thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, and as always, see you in the next one, and stay awesome.